Welcome to ITK Bar Camp. Here we continue our sessions on C++ training. And we're going to talk today about the use of macros, C++ macros, as a mechanism for performing code generation. Let's start one of those examples. This will be the third in our series. Um, the usual introduction that uh, we also always need uh, as a way of uh, printing messages to the uh, terminal. main function and the returning value. Okay. Um, so in this particular case we are going to show the example of how to use a macro definition. So we define the macro, we are going to call it print arguments. And this macro instead of being associated to a symbol we are going to associate it to a string that actually contains code. And because this code is going to be written in multiple lines, we need to use the slash character to escape the end of the line. Otherwise, we have to we will have had two write entire uh, code in a single line, and that usually makes it very hard to read. So our code is going to go through the list of arguments in the program and printing them to the screen. Remember that as after. Uh, for every line, we have to add that uh, escape characters to prevent uh, the macro from finishing too, far, uh, too early. Okay, and the last line will not need to have the escape character. So this section of code, these four lines uh, of code that include the for loop that iterates through all the arguments of the function is going to be associated as the value of this macro. Now the way to use the macro is simply to insert the symbol in the code. Um, just for decorative purposes we can add the semicolon. It's not really necessary because um, if we introduce these four lines of code here, a, a semicolon here is as unnecessary as putting a semicolon here. However, because we are used to see semicolons at the end of the line, it's convenient to put uh, the semicolon in there. Uh, typically it's a harmless thing to do, but you have to pay attention and remember that um, you are essentially composing the text of that expression by combining the content of the macro with whatever thing you add at the moment of um, placing the macro in the code. Now because we are accessing uh, the variables argc and argv, uh, we are of course have to include them as the arguments of the function. So remember that argv is an array of pointers to cars. So these two characters here indicate the array and here indicates the type of those elements in the array. All right, let's try compiling it. <coughs> we invoke the compiler and tell it to put the executable in this file. The compiler is happy and now we can execute this example. So when we don't pass any arguments, we don't have any additional output. We can add some arguments here and what the code is doing is of course printing each one of the arguments uh, line by line. Notice that what the compiler is saying is equivalent to uh, the, the text replacement of placing this code directly into the line. So instead of seeing um, this print argument here, what the compiler see is the equivalent of placing these lines of code directly into the code. And of course without the escape characters. So that's, that's an important aspect to keep in mind as you're managing macros. Uh, the macro is a replacement, it's done by the preprocessor, so it's done before the code is sent to the compiler. And it's essentially text, text based replacement. Um, so it's something that has to be uh, used very carefully. In the case that we were illustrating here, the use of uh, this code is to simplify some common expressions. So you can imagine that if in your code you are um, repeatedly trying to use this print argument uh, section of code, repeatedly trying to use these four lines of code, 
and putting them in a macro is a way of factorizing the code and preventing errors and variations in the way you write this code over and over again. Uh, but because the code is introduced by the preprocessor before the compiler, you have to be very careful on how you manage uh, the macros. Okay, so that concludes our session for today. Thank you for listening.